Welcome back, motorized bike enthusiast. Zach Rowe sent us over their oversized bike seat. Comes in at $30 with free shipping on Amazon at the time of recording. When it comes to simple parts like this, they really only have two jobs, and that's to be comfortable and not fall apart. So in this video, we can at least test the first one, as without the time machine, I can't tell you if it's going to fall apart or not. So what I'll be doing with this bike seat is moving it from bike to bike over the next couple of weeks, maybe months, and see how well it holds up. Uh, they were smart about this, as it's a budget bike seat, so they didn't advertise it for mountain bikes. So to give it a fair review, I won't put it on the trail bikes, as it would probably fall apart on the trail bikes. However, my roads are pretty rough around here, so we can give it a pretty good thrashing even on the road bikes. Of course, if there's one thing that motorized bike enthusiasts are good at, it's pushing the absolute limits of budget hardware. <laughs> so this should be interesting. I don't normally make videos dedicated to such a simple object like this, but it is a nice excuse for us to pull out one of the older bikes and ride it around. So for today's video, we'll be taking the daily bike, which is kind of ironic as I haven't used it as a daily rider since I started building the Minarelli. And this has the 110cc motor, and well, of course, it's really 85cc, you guys know that whole spiel. If you've ever installed a bike seat before, this is the, pretty much the same as most. It's identical to the setup used on a Huffy Cranbrook. And a quick tip I found when you are setting up a bike seat so you don't have to go back and readjust it again is I've always found that if you set the saddle level to the horizon and then tilt the nose up one notch, for me it's always been in the perfect position. Now our Kemp Bayside here has a suspension seat post as this bike was designed for maximum comfort and this uh, seat itself will actually be competing with what I believe is already a very comfortable seat, the stock seat for a Huffy Cranbrook or a Kemp Bayside, they're identical, which most of you who have used them before probably already know, they're really comfortable stock seats. The Zacro saddle uses a quad spring setup and they top that off with extra cushion on the seat itself. The styling design is decent and should match up to most bikes, however I wish they would have left off the green striping. It looks like a sticker, but it doesn't peel off. <laughs> of course, with a permanent marker, you can remove the color yourself. However, it's a thin green line, so I don't care, I'm just going to leave it on. The back of the saddle does have a reflective coating, but whether or not it's a small feature, any added safety measures are always welcome and never anything to complain about. So with all the basic stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and take it for a ride on some of our crappy roads with the Daily Driver. And while we're at it, we'll also give you an update on how this build's been doing. Guys, I really did forget how much I enjoyed riding this bike. I might have took I might have taken it for granted. I don't know. It's just so comfortable. The seat's doing great, by the way. I mean, my biggest concern with this seat is how long it'll last. And you know, we need a time machine for that, but it's really comfortable. I can give it that. The price is right. The extra padding they put on it makes a bit of a difference. Yeah, I just, I mean, 
mean, not only was this a comfortable bike to ride, but it's just really relaxed. It took a bit of work on the motor to get it to run decent, but now, you just get on this thing and chill. And if you need to hit the throttle for some reason, she has everything she needs. For some reason, when I'm on these cruiser style bikes that look more like, you know, a regular bicycle, I feel like I can go more places without worrying too much about drawing attention. I mean, I even have a pipe on this one, it's just a cheap knockoff. But with the silencer, it's a really quiet bike. I know the camera might make it seem like it's loud, but just the simple fact that you can hear me talking should give you some idea. I can't get very far down this, but it is pretty. I took the Eagle One, the, our, our off-road scooter. Yo, I took it all the way down to the river. Furthest I ever been down this. It was going through that grass. It was crazy. That thing is ridiculous. Now, if I remember right, this thing was really good at tractoring. So let's see if it can tractor through here. God, that's beautiful. Man, I really hope I set the color profile right on my cameras. I hope you guys can see this. This might be a 52 millimeter piston. This is not a trail bike. As far as the comfort goes on this Zach Rose seat, feels a little more comfortable than the stock seat on the Kent Bayside or a Huffy Cranbrook. We will need to take it on a nice long adventure ride before we can say for sure, so look forward to that here in the near future. But I would say that if you're happy with your stock seat's comfort and it's not broken, 
There's no real reason to upgrade to this. However, if my seat on a Cranbrook was to fail, this is certainly an option I would consider because the price point's right, the build quality seems fine for that price, and I don't really have any issues with what I see out of the box. I'll keep you guys posted in the future if any issues pop up, but just assume if you don't hear from me talking about it, it's still working just fine. So I hope you guys got some useful information out of today's video, or at the very least, were mildly entertained. And until next time, ride safe.